Hello and welcome back to my course on learning commands in Minecraft. My name is Sliced Lime and in this one we're going to start our journey into one of the major tools in our toolbox for commands. Entities. Almost everything in Minecraft falls into one of two categories, blocks and entities. This far we've focused extensively on blocks. Now it's definitely time to start talking about entities. An entity is anything in the game which is not aligned to the block grid or that can coexist with other things inside the same block space. That includes mobs, projectiles, item frames, armor stands, experience orbs and many other things, even players. All the things we summoned with the summon command a few episodes ago were entities, for instance. In many ways entities are far more complex than blocks, but in other ways they're also much more versatile. Once you are used to how working with entities works, you will find that you can use them for almost anything in command systems. So what can we do with entities? To demonstrate, let's find one. Remember that mobs are entities. Look at this cute innocent pig for instance. Our first entity related command is called kill. How do we use it? Let's look at the output for slash help kill to find out. It's kill followed by the targets. Remember how the square brackets mean the argument is optional, so kill works without any arguments at all. Curious. What does that do? Well, there you go. So the first thing we've learned here is that in most places where a target is expected but optional, the entity running the command is the default target. Pigo has been spared. Let's say we actually did want to kill something else than ourselves though, how does that work? The autocomplete information helps us out here. Just like with blocks, aiming at an entity and autocompleting a command that requires a target will make that entity pop up in the list. We can see my own name, a bunch of weird symbols starting with the at sign, a long string of characters and numbers. Meet uh, 0FF54257, affectionately known as Pigo. This is what is known as a UUID, a universal unique identifier. Every entity has one, and there can only be one entity named each UUID. It's unique. The UUID of an entity can be used as its name, so we could use it to kill Pigo here. But even though you can aim at an entity and use tab completion to autocomplete the whole thing, UUIDs are rarely the most convenient way to target entities. So what about those other symbols in the autocomplete list? Of course, mentioning a player by name here will target that player, but what do the funny at things do? They are called selectors, and usually read out as at a, at e, and so on. We'll look at most of them today, but we'll save at s for a few episodes from now when we'll be learning about execution contexts. A selector selects entities, giving us a method to pick and choose among which of all the entities in the world we mean to target in our commands. There are two types of selectors player selectors and entity selectors. As you could probably guess from the name, player selectors can only select players while entity selectors can select any type of entity. The player selectors are at A, at P and at R. A quick way to remember sort of what they do is to think of them as all, player and random. At A selects all players online at the moment, which could be any amount of results. Attentive viewers might have noticed that the help for the kill command said targets, not target. You can run it on multiple targets at once. So slash kill at A kills all players. Don't let the power get to your head. At P targets the closest player. When you run a command from the chat, that will always be yourself. But when a command runs in a command block, it could end up being someone else, assuming you're on a multiplayer server, of course. Note that the result is always at most one player. The final player selector at R selects a random player. Like at P, this only targets at most one player. When talking about at P and at R here, I said at most one player. It is possible for all three of these selectors to fail to find any targets at all, which usually results in the command that contained them failing, but that's not always the case. Before we move on to the entity selectors, let me take a quick moment to ask you to please select the like button for the video. That helps let YouTube know that this video is a useful tool to learn Minecraft commands that should be shown to the world, so I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Our last selector for the day is going to be our first entity selector, at E. At E selects every single entity in the world. That's a lot. 
If you don't want to keep killing all your Pigo friends, a nice tip for experimenting with the results of selectors is that the message in the say command can contain selectors, which will be expanded to a list of the results. So let's take a look at the output of slash say at e. That's quite a lot of stuff. That doesn't seem useful at all. We don't want to kill all those things, and chances are we won't want to do other things to every single entity in the world either. We need to be more precise. This is where our next tool comes in handy, called selector argument. A selector argument is an extra requirement or modifier that restricts or reorders the selected entities. Selector arguments are placed in square brackets after a selector and can be used with both player and entity selectors. One very obvious selection is to want only things near us. We can do that with the distance selector argument. Let's try it out. Slash say at e open square bracket distance equals zero dot dot ten close square bracket. That's a lot more manageable than our previous list. But what did that mean? At e is all entities. We knew that. But then distance equals zero dot dot ten. That means whose distance away is between 0 and 10. A more common way to write this is as an open-ended range. Slash say at e open square bracket distance equals dot dot 10 close square bracket. Which you could also read as say all entities at a distance less than or equal to 10. Strictly speaking, that could also select entities at a negative distance, but that isn't a thing that can happen, so we ignore that. You could also do the opposite. Slash say at e open square bracket distance equals 10 dot dot close square bracket, which will show us only entities further away than distance 10. By the way, reading out the brackets this way is pretty cumbersome, so the most common way to read out selectors in commands is to simply pretend that they don't exist. So we'd read that as say at e distance equals 10 or more, or something similar. Distance isn't the only interesting criterion, of course. Another very common selection is by type. Let's say we only want to select the pigs around, for instance. We can do that using the type selector argument. This accepts an entity type. Often these are quite obvious and easy to guess from the in-game name of things, so for instance Pigo here is a Minecraft colon pig. If you're in doubt, the Minecraft wiki is always a good resource. Look again for the data value section and its identifier. So we can now select only the pigs in the world. Let's try that. Slash say, at e, type equals pig. Hold on there Lime, you just said pigs are Minecraft colon pig. Well, if you think back to the very first episode, we discussed how the Minecraft namespace is the default. So pig is actually exactly the same thing as Minecraft colon pig. So no need to type out the long version. Anyway, slash say at e type equals pig. Pig, 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 pig. Not too useful in this case, but of course that would be different if we ran slash kill or another command. We can also combine several selector arguments by listing them separated by commas. So let's find only the pigs nearby. Slash say at e type equals pig distance equals less than 10. There's also another way to use the type argument by placing an exclamation mark in front of the type. This use of an exclamation point is an inversion, so it means the opposite. For instance, at e type equals exclamation point player means all non-player entities. Remember that players are also entities. When reading this type of command out, the exclamation point is usually read out as not, so that would be read as at e type equals not player. So we keep getting lots of entity results here. What if we only wanted a few? That's where our next selector argument comes into play. The limit selector argument. That expects a single number representing the maximum number of results for our selection. At e type equals cow, limit equals 5 will give us at most 5 cows. At e type equals bat, limit equals 1 will give us at most 1 bat. Which bat though? It turns out that the answer to that is an arbitrary one, basically whichever is the most efficient for the game to cough up as a response to an annoying player asking for entities. That is sometimes perfectly fine, and sometimes it's not at all what we want. What if we want to be in control of which result we get, but still want only a certain amount? That's where our last selector argument for today comes into play. The sort selector argument. Sort has four possible modes. Arbitrary, nearest, furthest, and random. Arbitrary is what we get by default that I just described. Nearest and furthest sort on distance, and random picks results at random. When combined with the limit selector argument, this lets you make some pretty precise selections. 
There are lots more selector arguments that we will be learning over the coming episodes. Far too many to go through all at once, but even the ones we have learned this far lets us make some pretty sophisticated queries. Slash kill, at e, type equals skeleton, distance equals less than 20, sort equals nearest, limit equals 1. This will kill the nearest skeleton, but only if one exists within 20 blocks from our position. Next time we'll stop being so destructive and learn more about how to summon new entities rather than killing the ones we already have. Until then, thank you for learning Minecraft commands with me, and remember to get the companion map and run through the exercises there.